Here, Commissioner Tunnel. He just muted himself. We know he's yeah. here. He's here. He's here. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Nemec is absent. Commissioner Kinzer is absent. Commissioner Rock. Here. Commissioner Moss. Here. Commissioner Milfi. All right. We have a quorum. I uh, can get a motion to open the meeting. I move to open the meeting. <laughs> second. Motion second. And second. Huh? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We get started. Uh, just to confirm with staff all the uh, note uh, notices and everything was done correctly. Yep. All right, great. And I just want to remind remind the commissioners uh, any of the items we're dealing with. If if you've had any ex parte communications regarding that application or any conflicts of interest, please let us know at the time of the application. All right, get moving forward here. Um, the minutes are not ready for approval on this meeting, so they'll be on the next agenda. So we'll move that to the next agenda. And which brings us to the preliminary plat plan review. Uh, we have a free application for a rezone at 1441 State Highway 55. Uh, I think I heard Erica is here. Eric, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, if you'd like to present uh, what you got planned, that would be great. Okay, um, it's pretty simple. I would just like to split five acres off of my existing 13 acre lot um, with the intent to sell the five acre lot. Um, I sent out applications or an invitation for a neighborhood meeting and uh, received only one response from the property own, owner to the south, um, the IWS LLC, uh, a man named Gordy Hansen, responded via email in support of um, what I explained and said he would be happy to write a letter, you know, further um, stating his support if necessary. Um, I haven't done anything else yet. I'm pretty new to this whole process, so I'm trying to get the ball rolling. <laughs> All right, uh, commissioners, any questions? Proximity to the airport. This is yeah. south of Icolas. South, south of Icolas, okay. Just well, just curious. The next property south. Yep. Yeah, I didn't have any questions. Um, Eric, I got a couple things. On your driveway, are you proposing that the easement that goes through it is to service your property and then that driveway will also service the new five acre piece that would be my that's what i'm proposing yes okay um i remember how easement access is allowed uh shared driveways are allowable for Two lots at a time for large parcels over 10,000 square feet. Okay, so that's not a problem having easement access. Um, other thing would be to make sure. Uh, have you talked with the health department on uh, septic approval? No, I have not yet done that. Okay, because that's definitely going to need to be approved. Um, you might want to talk to them. I mean, depending on your process, if they can, is typically out there, it's a pretty high water table and they may want mo water monitoring though you okay. might might be able to get that done still if not it could be a delay for you till next year so just it might be well worth uh, calling the health department kind of seeing scheduling if that's something they can still put in now and, and monitor it through this spring just kind of a heads up there okay Other than that, I don't have any thoughts or concerns. Any Scott, you got anything on this one or? No, I um, I was going to ask the same thing about the septic, but yeah, I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think Erica, your big thing there is is that septic. I, I like to say I do know that area is a little high water, and they are most likely would want to monitor it. So the sooner you could probably do that, the, the easier it'll be for you. Okay. I'll make that call right away. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for you at this point. So we'll look forward to seeing your application in the future. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other questions for us? 
Um, not at this time, no. So I'll just um, keep working through the checklist. And the first thing I'll do is get in touch with Central District Health about septic. Okay, great. Right, thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, this time, there are no items for the consent agenda. So we will move to old business. In old business, we have plan design review uh, 2022 or 2202 501 Pine Street. Uh, Eileen, are you with us? No, Sherry Reeves is here. Pardon me, who? Sherry Reeves. Oh, Sherry. Okay, Sherry. All right, Sherry. Um, I know you've done a presentation before, but I guess just give us an update of where where are we at with this. I know we got some commissioners. We got some samples on your tables or on your packets. Here and here and some pictures of what's there. So you can see the packet. We have a couple photos of the actual images of the sign now, as it's painted with the gray and white, and with the additional letters with the uh, examples you see with. The, <laughs> Is how it's going to be on the building. Just give you a full sense of what it's going to look like. I know last time we were so talking. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, this, this is <clears throat> Commissioner Tunnel. I uh, am still not able to get in, so I don't have the information in front of me or the photos, but there was a comment or suggestion that maybe part of the confusion was there didn't appear to be uh, the background colors didn't appear to be the same on all of the images. Can somebody address that? Well, the, uh, actually, the images that were provided last time were from Jim from Rocky Mountain Signs and his image and our image weren't quite clear of one image looked kind of slightly gray and one was white. Um, so that's why I'm putting in the pocket to um, show the building as it is right now. So we have the gray um, colors on the side, but pure white on the on the shop and then just the colors itself, as you can see in the packet. Um, I think that was the issue. It was just it wasn't clarity on the actual color of the background behind the center. So these are just examples. We also have some paint samples. I, I sent it in the email so you can kind of see, or I, Eileen did actually, provided the different um, samples, and then we also added, added them to the board so you could see the gray and white itself. The actual colors. Hey, Chairman and um, Commissioners in the room, before you, you have provided um, a picture of the actual building as painted currently um, that isn't rendered. Um, yeah. And then the material samples that they made for you have the same paint swatch color. Um, Sheree, correct me if I'm wrong in describing the samples, um, but they also have the gray that's painted um, on the trim of the windows just to show um, how the building looks. And then um, via email, um, Commissioner Tunnel, um, I think I forwarded you the same pictures that the other commissioners have in front of them physically. Um, if you have a computer in front of you to look at your email over the last day, then you can see the same images that the commissioners here are looking at. As you can see, that's the gray on the fascia and the, as you can see on the photos. So you can kind of tell the color and the two different colors, the white and gray together. So you can clearly understand the two different paint samples. These other examples of you know, different yeah. signs, yeah. different so signs we're talking about. Okay. The, um, staff report, talk about those well, gray is actually the fascia soffits and the window trim as well, as seen in the image. Actually, the image that doesn't show the window trim also, but you can see on the fascia and the soffits. All right, is there anything else you'd like to let us know before we go to staff report? Mary, was there anything else you had? No, that's it. Just we wanted to provide you with the right sample so you can get a clear understanding of what the sign would be. I think there was a issue of not having clarity from the previous renderings. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Now this one is yours, yes, one, so correct. staff report on yeah. you. So um, you spoke about this application last month, and I'm sorry for being absent, uh, but this application comes before you instead of being an administrative approval um, like most signage, um, particularly because of the colors within the design of the signage proposed itself, um, and specifically the commercial design guidelines and the prohibition of har harshly contrasting colors. Um, that's not necessarily uh, <laughs> point blank rule that can be interpreted with confidence by staff at this time. So it's before you to determine whether the colors and designs being proposed um, meet partially contrasting colors and colors and therefore need to be revised um, to be less contrasting or whether in commission's opinion, this is within the boundaries of city code. Uh, the design itself, there isn't anything wrong with the verbiage. We don't really um, pay attention too much to actual copy um, unless there's profanity involved. So that's not a problem. The structure, there's no structural problems. Um, the mounting method is entirely code compliant. And the one difference between um, the signs as proposed and the samples that you have before you is that the actual sign upon installation is supposed to be backlit or halo lit. Um, so it'll have lights on the backs of each of the letters, kind of casting a, a halo around each letter or symbol um, rather than having a light bulb pointed at it. Um, so some examples in town include um, like the Wild River Java letters that are mounted on the building. Um, what are more of them that are just not coming to mind right now? Um, the Ridley sign is halo lit. Um, so that is a code compliant method. So really the, the main question is, do does the placement of the black on white or red on white, but mostly the black and white constitute partially contrasting colors um, within the boundaries of the commercial design guidelines or does it not? And um, if you have any recommended solutions, staff recommendation is to utilize a off white, but mostly gray, light gray in tone, um, sun panel or background panel, um, but there could also be modifications to the color of the letter itself. I know that the applicants um, have pretty specific guidelines from um, higher up um, in the national office or international office regarding what can and can't work, but there were accommodations that were able to be made for the actual painting of the building to include an accent color. So I don't know that things are impossible. Can I stand for any questions? Not being around there any of it, uh, recently, is this what it is now? Or Correct. It used and this, to be is, this is what it was? Or those are just two of the same picture that just look different because the city printer is not the highest quality in the world. Oh, I see. Okay, so, so this is this is what we're going up right here, then, right? Okay. Yeah. And in essence, this color of white. Yeah. So if you look at your sample, or I mean, you're looking at that white, and, and this gray is the trim. Correct. Okay. Correct. This is the each around the top here, like the okay. Let's see. So it gets, it looks almost a blue color here, but yeah, yeah you're, if you go so that one in real life. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a little closer to test. Yeah. Yeah, I think so because this one's a little faded out. Yeah. If you compare it to the white here in the block, that's more more like it. I know the black on the top on the top part of the building right here. What what is is that, is that just? I think that a darker. Um, can I see it? Can you it That's the second story. I think that might be a portion of the building that hadn't been painted yet. Cherie, is that correct? In the newest image that we printed for them, the second story is still dark green. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Correct. Uh, well, it's yeah for currently, but it's of course will be white moving forward. Which you're seeing is the previous color scheme. This up here will be a white, the white color that we're talking about for the next Correct. Okay. Oh, and then the other images that I've given you are examples that the applicants submitted of black on white signage found within town. Every single one is an example of a sign that has not been approved, so it either predates any signage or design guidelines for signage, um, or was installed without um, the proper permit. Um, and that they in a state of continued non conforming nature, so they haven't actually existed as examples of design approval. 
um, but they do exist. There's any questions for staff or the applicant? Yeah, question for staff. So the, the conversation, I think the conversation is hinging around harshly contrasted color, and black and white is an example of a harshly contrasting cover, cover color. Is that correct? That is the question that you are deciding okay. on. Yes. I don't know if I could think of a better definition of partially contrasting from a staff perspective, but color is a perceptual phenomena. Right. So, thus, it is your task. OK. OK. Commissioners, is a discussion on? Uh, I'm ready for a discussion. This, um, Scott, I know it's kind of a little tricky for you since you don't have the sample board in front of you. Um, well, I, you know, I, I was able to, I was able to see it, um, you know, when I read through the, the packet. <clears throat> I guess, I guess my, my uh, comments would be that, you know, I spent thirty some years in the advertising world, <clears throat> working on the corporate side, and we ran into this kind of situation all the time when we were building a new branch in, in a new city or wherever. And um, the code's the code. And unless it's a ridiculous code, then, uh, you know, we need to stick with that in my view. Uh, a, a light gray background uh, versus a bright white background isn't going to do anything, in my opinion, to the integrity of the logo itself. And <clears throat> if we make a change on this application, then we're opening up the door to make changes on many. And, um, you know, that's I'm not. I'm not totally set in concrete one way or the other, but that's just my assessment of where we stand with this. And uh, I know that as a advertising director in, in different companies, you know, we went with what the cities required in 95 percent of the time so these other ones are just examples of signs that are in place right now but there was no sign approval on it at all or there's no guidelines for these people just they put them up and that was it right. i'd like to reference something if i could possibly um if if as uh just to reference that what paul signed as coming into town is it's clearly a dark it's a black or uh, a darker color on white. There's a contrast there, and I know it's probably uh, something that you guys have all seen. But just to give an idea of a reference, or we have kind of seen similar signs in town that would be you know, almost identical to what we're trying to achieve here. And it was redone this summer, actually redone and put back up, um, and it looks amazing. But uh, it looks lovely. But um, I think it's very similar in regards to background and contrast color. I didn't. I wasn't able to. I didn't print. I'm not sure if it was printed out and that's included in the packet, but I just wanted to reference that. Yeah, and we'll be talking about that because once again, it wasn't done by or by approval. Um, I don't know. I'm... My my take is, you know, how do we interpret harsh? You know, a strong contrast could be considered different from a harsh contrast. I can see a harsh contrast being like a neon orange with like a neon green. Like that to me is harsher than a black and white. While it's a strong contrast, it's not harsh. So I think there, depending on how you interpret the word harshly, I think there's some flexibility here. If we want to interpret harsh as black versus white, <coughs> it's clear. If harsh is, you know, garish, then that's a different question, I think. And I don't think that's garish at all, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that's purely a matter of semantics. White and black are the strongest contrast you can have. No, I'd say that. Yeah. yeah it says harshly, not strongly. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh implies, you know, like negative or upsetting. 
So, and the rest of the building is going to be all the same colors, correct? Uh, yes, just the gray, the white, and then of course the lettering on the sign. And black. There's a new black as well on there. The doors are new black. So there's going to be a combination of colors that you see up and down. Just a, you know, not, not too contrast, of course, but um, there's multiple signs in town that are similar, that are uh, subtle and I don't, I, simplistic, and I think are done well. And I think cars will be just done the same. You could reinvent the wheel here if we wanted to. But, um... And, uh, yeah, and you know, I agree with you. We're, when, when speaking to a harsh, I mean, we're talking uh, drastic colors. In my mind, I think of bright neon with uh, with a, a blue or a bright orange or whatever that may be. When I think of harsh interpretation in my mind, um, I think that you know, white being not a color itself, anyways. Um, white not a color, black, of course dark in itself i just i don't see the um the extreme harsh uh definition being applied to those two non-color and black um you know with accents of gray i think it's um i think it's done rather well and very subtle and said not um much extreme definitely not harsh now the code says harshly contrasted color combinations brilliant luminescent or day glow colors. So some of those examples of day glow colors. And right. so, so it's not, mm -hmm. it's harsh and they expanded on that mm -hmm. even further like the neon thing. So there clearly was some intent, I think, that in addition to other colors that we were talking about. So I, uh, I don't know if to me, black and white does stand out. And I think I, I mean, I can see the, a light gray, I and mean, even if you're doing this, I mean, it's still, and that's going to be probably going to be lighter than that. I mean, it's still. Mm -hmm. I kind of need it though. Black and white. Or, you're saying that you don't like the, or the, you're saying that the contrasting colors on this particular one are, are too con. Well, it would. Too contrasting or. Black you know, and white. I mean, it's. it's yeah. Harsh to where you know, I think kind of get away from the, any potential idea of the harsh should be black and white. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the, the intent <clears throat> when, when this sign uh, code was redone, I don't know, six or seven years ago uh, to do most things administratively was to try to, um, to describe the signage and what was allowed and what was not allowed in a way that would, that would uh, <clears throat> fit in with the, mountain uh, feel and, and the, you know, the subtle browns and, and greens and off whites and that sort of thing. So there's a little context to it. But to me, if, if uh, I mean, I've never heard of this company before. I'm not in the real estate market, in the business, but if I saw it, I think it's a nice looking logo. I don't think um, that a company should be too, so concerned in, in a small community like McCall that they want us to change our sign codes to match what they want to have in their building. It just seems to me that uh, if I wouldn't want to make a vote tonight, because I think we only have four of the commissioners here. And if they're asked, it sounds like what the applicant is doing is asking us to change our sign code. And if that's the case, then I'm, I'm open to that. Um, but I don't think allowing one person to have a white and black because that's their corporate logo all the way up to the international level. Um, that it is is right for us to make that change because we've already turned down a number of signs that are uh, uh, applicants that have applied for black and white or you know a, a direct contrast between the between the colors. So it's not the end of the world certainly by any means, but. I think it looks to me like it's either we go back and, and discuss changing the sign code um, and and then going forward, we won't have to undo everything again. Um, so I don't know, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Well, that's something to take into consideration. Scott has been on the commission for quite a few years and has had more experience in some of the signs, obviously with the black and white than current commission, including myself for signs. Um, 
and I think I agree. I don't want to go back and, you know, if we change something now in code that's moving forward, and that's not the appropriate way to do it, especially if other ones in the past have been denied based on a black and a white. You know, I think the objective of the role is not to keep signs like this out of town, and we are a, a national brand. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Go sorry, Sherry, could we're, the commissioners are talking right now. Oh, so, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, we're kind of in our, we'll ask if you have a question, but please, we're just <laughs> kind of in our. You our, got it. Do your thing. So, discussion. City attorney may have a comment for you guys. Just Bill, do you, are you out there? Are you out there? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I am. I appreciate that, Brian. Um, so, and I'm trying to scroll on my computer screen. Um, so I would, if you're trying to decide what it means to have contrasting colors. Um, I would just orientate the commission to take a look at the, the design guidelines uh, that were included in the packet, in particular design guideline number 27. And that describes uh, that we don't want harsh contrast, but it also describes what that means. And so, and, and what we would expect in signs with the city of McCall. So, so this is, these are the standards we have. Um, and I would include, I would advise you to review these standards and then determine whether this particular sign, um, in light of this, uh, design guideline 27 is a harsh contrast. I hope that's, I hope that clarifies. I just think we need to be orientated. I felt like we were a little directionless, um, and we should be we should be looking at, at really what is in what is in these design standards. If there's any questions, please let me know. Okay, my question is, what does the design standard say? Is harsh. Brian, can you read it out loud or would you like me to? Um, sure, I'll read. So I'll read out uh, standard 27. In most cases, only one or two accent colors should be used in addition to the base. Doors may be painted a bright accent color or they may be left natural wood pitch. Harshly contrasting color combinations should be avoided. Brilliant, luminescent, or day glow colors should not, will not be approved. The colors found in the landscape around McCall, the dark greens of the forest, the gray brown of the soils, the blue of Pale Lake, the green of sagebrush, the brilliant reds and golds of the fall colors of aspens and larches, and the tan or all relate well to the materials of construction in McCall. Thank you. Didn't hear oh, white in there. I don't know. Would this be such an issue if it wasn't on the lake? No. Would anywhere, it, anywhere in the city. Anywhere in the city. Okay. Yeah. So, if we deny as presented, what is the proposed alternative? That they just paint well, some gray behind it, or yeah, staff's recommendation or conditions of approval would be that they would revise plan and behind the black lettering and have the, where was it there, the light gray background. In place and you of, could also provide some other form of recommendation that's different or flexible, um, but you also aren't doing a vote. Um, you're just providing a recommendation to applicant and staff, um, but it'll proceed as eventually approved administratively. Okay. So I guess my other question, and this doesn't address the sign that's freestanding, but will the halo lighting be on all the time? Um, that's a good question for Sheree. It was my understanding that the freestanding sign may not have had lighting, and I can't recall. Yeah, that the freestanding sign is not going to have lighting, but if the halo lighting is on, the letters all the time, you're going to have that light coloration that distinguishes distinguishes between the white and the black. Well, 
Well, I don't know what about a dark blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That might get along with me. Um, well, yeah, I, I guess. If I can provide examples of how other applicants get to their resolution, yeah. almost in every case, they choose either an extremely light gray that basically looks white. So then, from a policy standpoint, the word is smoky gray or something else, but it looks like white. So you're not pushing any policy buttons by saying black and white. Um, or they choose a different version of black that seems more gray, but then when it's out in the real world, um, in the wild, as we call it sometimes, um, it still does what the proposed goal is to lookers' eyes, that kind of thing. It just doesn't push the buttons of the policy in general. So that's a common resolution, and that usually takes the form of gray or off black. But it's entirely up to you. Nope. I would be in favor of something with a light gray or some type of gray. I'm really not in favor of the white because I do think that kind of kicks into potentially some of the issues with item 27 the intent. So. Yeah, I, I guess when I read it, I just interpret it differently than it has been historically in the past. So I, I hesitate to go against, strongly hesitate to go against everything that this commission has done in the past. Um, but I also want us to come to a decision so these this group can get working on their signage. Uh, so what's the, the comfort level for having one name vote and everybody That's approves right. with conditions, you know? Yeah, because it's just recommendation. Yeah, I, you know, like, so yeah. we, we don't have to be 100% yeah. in alignment. And this could be something we can move forward in the future, too, and maybe try to, as a group mission, kind of define a little bit more in detail later. Yeah, yeah. Re refine the, the yeah. ordinance yeah. a little just bit so better, yeah. simpler for staff and applicants. But so would it be a motion for? <laughs> yeah, you guys should vote on it. Would it be a vote or? A vote to approve with conditions. As stated, or when. Okay. Um, do we Adler, have any? Or um, would it be? I can't remember if Bill said. Bill, can you jump in on whether this would be remand back to staff to include certain revision, or would it be a vote to approve with conditions as stated? Well, <clears throat> it's it's not totally clear to me. Um, what direction the commission is headed with this. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's hard for me to say uh, which those are two distinct options. So I think they should if they if we can articulate sort of generally the direction everybody is headed with this, <clears throat> maybe we go to each commission. And then I might be able to be a little more helpful. I think he was saying come to each commissioner. Yeah, just kind of go around the table. Yeah. So, Scott, um, we'll start with you. Your thoughts? I think we know them, but just to reiterate it. Yeah, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I think that that uh, we should we should ask the uh, uh, the city to <clears throat> the administration to uh, approve the signage with. Um, uh, either a uh, um, off gray or whatever you want to call it, off white, light gray, or something that isn't a stark white uh, with, with uh, you know with the black and, and the red in the logo. Um, that's that's what I I think the the logo is a, it's a great looking sign. I don't have any problems with that. I don't have any problems with white and black. I just have a problem with what we've always done. And I don't see we should be changing. I, I think that the intent of what we've always done is right. I think it's correct that we should look for softer colors. And I know that people have accommodated those uh, those design guidelines in the past. And I don't think that at this point in time, we need to be changing what we've always done. All right. Uh opinion is without that kind of historical lens and looking at the code and the design guidelines based on my interpretation of the word harshly I don't have issue with the sign as proposed. Tony? Um, I'm going to side with you Liz. Uh, I, I, I don't have any problems with the conditions as proposed either. 
I think that, you know, uh, maybe we're kind of being too particular about what kind of gray it's going to be, but as long as it's not called black and white, I think that's an issue also, too, that we're, we're going to alleviate from the standpoint we're saying it's a gray as opposed to. So you're more the, for the gray? I'm, I'm more for the gray. Okay. Um, I agree with Scott as well. Um, with the wording with you know some type of gray and not just the regular white. So that's kind of are my my thoughts. So I don't know if we Scott, would you want to do a motion or I guess open a motion? Yeah, I mean I guess um, Bill you're saying that, that this should be a recommendation uh, or I mean approval by the the council as long as the city um, planners, planning department requires a, a uh, light gray versus a, a um, stark white. It, that, that sounds to me like or? what the staff recommendation was. Yeah, so I think so too. The, the recommended condition of approval was prior to issuance of signage approval, <coughs> the applicant should submit a revised sign design plan utilizing a gray background behind black lettering in place of white on all signs. And then, of course, the. Um, the expiration language. Yeah, I think that'd be that'd be fine. We might want to say, um, you know, gray tone or something that that gives them some latitude between. You know what's gray to me may not be gray to them or whatever, but but no that I if if, if I, I would I would make a motion based on what uh, how you just phrased it, Bill. Um, so Brian, can you help formulate a, a motion here? Um, so it so sounds like I, Scott, I think, Scott's preferred motion would be to approve with the conditions of approval as stated in the. Staff report in the report. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So you want to make so that move? <laughs> yeah, so move. Right. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Rock. Nay. Uh, Commissioner Moss. Yay. Commissioner Tunnel. Yay. Commissioner Lyons. Yes. Uh, motion so has nay, two yays, and a yes. <laughs> okay, just had to make sure that was right. <laughs> uh, motion as approved. So, uh, Jerry, if you would be working with staff and what's that? So we're all square on the gray, then we're all we're going to get a chance to see that before and we go, we'll through, we'll, we'll go through staff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to. New business. We have a PUD 2202 and subdivision 2101 at 176 Coy Road. Uh, Denise Carter and Colby Garrett and Chad Carter. Um, I'm not sure who we have here to present. Denise, Cor Corby, or Chad? We have Denise Carter and Corby Garrett here to present. Chad, Al Chad Carter is also here. Okay, great. If you would like to present your application, that'd be wonderful. Sure. Hi, um, my name is Corby Garrett. Um, I'm pleased to submit the planned unit development for Coy Estates. Um, this is a, a single family residential community located at Coy Road, Chad Drive. Uh, the property is located outside of city limits, but within the city uh, impact zone. Uh, the subdivision name uh, plans to be Coy Estates. Um, Access for the subdivision will come off of uh, County Roads, Coy and Chad. There's no planned um, development of roads within the subdivision because of the natural access of public roads to the lots. Um, utilities will be served by individual wells and septic systems. Uh, the existing home, there is one existing house in the development already. Um, the development consists of 9.2 acres. Uh, we're propo proposing to establish eight lots within the 9.2 acres. 
Uh, the property is currently zoned R1, which allows for one acre minimum sized lots. Um, the existing home would remain on 2.2 acres and therefore creating seven additional lots sized at one acre apiece. Um, I believe you have most of this narrative in your report. Um, I'll briefly go through it and then answer any questions that you have. Um, we did complete groundwater monitoring uh, last spring um, in accordance with Central District Health and Chad with HECO engineers. Um, the subdivision engineering report has been submitted um, with all the groundwater monitoring data. Um, because this is not adjacent to any city services, um, we did have to do this groundwater monitoring in, in order to establish uh, the ability to, to install individual septic systems. Um, and that also goes for the uh, water services to the property. Um, it's not adjacent to any city water, uh, so therefore we do propose individual wells for the subdivision as well. Um, other utilities involved are uh, basically power um, to be brought in from the corner, the intersection of Coy and Chad Drive. Um, uh, we propose a, a shared utility trench to bring um, internet service to the lots as well um, in the same uh, conduit for internet service in the same trench with power services. Um, the density of the property, um, Coy Suites, Coy Estates includes 9.2 acres. Um, the net density is 8.6 dwelling units per acre, uh, which does meet the, the city requirements. Um, the density consists of current zoning and complies with McCall Area Comprehensive Plan. The preliminary plat delineates future home sites, septic locations, locations, and open space locations. Um, like I said, zoning is R1. Uh, we don't request any zoning changes. Uh, phasing, um, because there is no construction of roads, um, individual driveways will be constructed by lot owners once lots are sold. So there really is no construction to be built on this subdivision. Um, therefore, we propose um, completing this in one phase. There will not be multiple phases of the project. Um, we did conduct a neighborhood meeting on August 9th of 2021. Um, we did mail. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> letters to adjacent property owners as city code requires. Um, two neighbors attended and both had positive feedback. Um, we have not had any negative comments or any negative feedback regarding the project. Um, along with the subdivision, we have submitted a plan for a, a, um, for a PUD. Um, the application was submitted with the uh, original pre preliminary plat. Um, the PUD covers a lot of the same information. Um, the open space requirements in the PUD uh, require us to have 10% set aside for open space. Uh, we have we have delineated that on the plat, um, the 10% open space. Um, on the plat, you'll see that that open space coexists with the septic areas on the plat. Um, and there was some comments from the from the city engineer and the uh, the planner as whether that's acceptable or not. So we may discuss that. Um, amenities uh, along with the PUD, the amenities um, that are required in the PUD, we've proposed to uh, to include Chad Drive um, by, by markings on the roads to include it as part of the, the city's uh, pathways master plan. Um, to include markings and signage for shows for, for a bike path. Uh, we weren't able to get a lot of feedback from the Parks and Rec um, department on that, but it is listed um, you know, within their master plan. Um, our second amenity we did not include. Um, we do have a plan to add a second amenity if if the commission you know prefers us to, to enhance that. Um, Parking, any parking would be um, accommodated on individual lot. No street parking would be allowed. We do have an HOA planned um, as well as CCNRs. 
uh, for the subdivision. Um, we have completed a WI, a wildland urban interface plan, um, which was sent to McCall Fire for review. Um, and I believe they have re returned comment back. Um, we have also been in contact with McCall Fire um, to meet the uh, city requirements on find this here. The city requirements on the um, the fire protection tank that they say will be required to meet their code. Uh, so there is a proposed 30,000 gallon fire protection tank that we propose to put on the north end of the subdivision within lot number five. It does not show that on the plat. Um, but that's where uh, the fire chief proposed us to put that as a central location for access for the fire department. Um, we did receive some comments from other agencies. Um, obviously, McCall Fire being one, which was acknowledged and addressed. Uh, Valley County Road and Bridge, uh, we did receive comments as, as far as um, as conditions of of the road what that road is called Jen. the road that leads into chad and coy excuse me i forgot the name of the road there wisdom road it is yeah um we don't we do not propose to do any improvements to public roads um, we feel that 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 road is in pretty poor condition as it is to be honest with you um but the the development does not include any any improvements to public roads um and the only last thing that um that i recall is uh, a stormwater runoff plan um we currently do not have that in place um that is something that our engineer is working on um the the city engineer didn't did note that the the site would meet the city requirements for the stormwater runoff plan just based on the layout of the land and that's the majority of what I have to present. Um, I guess I'd open for any questions. All right, thank you. I think we'll go with the staff report. All right. Yes, uh, Mr. Garrett did a fairly thorough job of presenting this. Uh, it's really a pretty straightforward application. It is an eight unit subdivision R1 zone. It is a plan unit development because it is over the five acre size that automatically triggers that per the R1 zone. Um, the main contentions in the staff report were that the 10% uh, open space is the septic drain fields, um, as the open space is required to be generally natural and uh, undisturbed. The installation of drain fields is going to negate that capability. I believe they have plenty of room on site to come up with some alternates. Um, and then the other was that, yeah, they only presented one uh, amenity for the, per the PUD code, which requires two. Um, generally speaking, the PUD code exists to allow flexibility in zoning standards. That flexibility is not extended to the PUD code itself. Um, with that, I will stand for any questions. What's this development up here in the top of the picture? Uh, is, that the, is that the asphalt plan? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, with the additional 10% of open space <coughs> considered an amenity? No. Okay. That is also a requirement of the PV code. Okay. Is 30,000 gallons of water tank, as far as fire protection is concerned, enough? Uh, is, that, is, that, is that the recommendation from the fire department? That was that recommended by the fire department. Okay. That's a lot. That's just really going. Um, mm -hmm. Now, were we going to have Morgan with the? Oh yeah, Morgan. Report. I forgot. <laughs> Morgan uh, is yeah. We're trying something new out and going to have Morgan to give an engineering report on this application. Sure. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. I got a new computer, so I wasn't sure if it worked the same on this one. <laughs> it's had some glitches. Um, 
So for this project, there wasn't much for us to review because it is out of the city limits and it's not near bodies of water. Um, they're all county roads, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, we just need stormwater information on how stormwater will be handled from the lots. Usually for subdivisions, it's like lot line drainage easements um, for swales in the future, um, but nothing too expensive. And then the plat, there were a few um, typos and there's a few labels that need to be added and we need digital files, but that's pretty standard for a preliminary plat. Here's my quick overview. Of <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. So I think at this point we'll open it up for public comment. Um, if you're online and you're on the phone, uh, remember star six to potentially unmute yourself. And so we'll open up to public comment. Do you have, do you have one guest here? Okay, good. And there's your name and address. Hi. Hi, Denise. It's Brandy, your neighbor. Hi, Brandy. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was at the neighborhood meeting Brandy. last August. Brandy. My address Brandy. is. Um, so full name is Brandy Salas. Address is 691 Chad Drive. Um, overall, I think they're doing a really nice job. I'm, I'm just here as a neutral party. Obviously, I'm not totally happy that all the development is happening in the call, but I can't strike this subdivision down as saying that it's bad. Um, I love that they have the building envelopes. And um, I feel that a lot of planning went into the CCNRs. I did. I couldn't remember if it was banned as short-term rentals in your CCNRs. So that was one question that I uh, had. Uh, and I don't know if this is the time and place to bring that up, or if that is. No, we can, they can respond back. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but no, overall, I mean, other than. It being next to my home, I feel like they put a lot of thought into the development of it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very yeah. much. All right. Uh, do we have anybody online that would like to make a comment? Again, star six if you're muted and give it a few seconds. All right, not hear anything. We will close the public hearing. And uh, I don't remember in the CCNRs, I don't think it was. Um, Corby was in the CCNRs. Did you have anything regarding vacation rentals? I believe we did. I'll let Denise answer that. She worked on most of that. We're still kind of working on it, but our, our idea is not to, you know, not to make this like an Airbnb uh, subdivision or or homes. Um, we're still working on the language for that, but that's that's not, you know, as as we are living there, it's not really something that we, as Brandy said, that we really want to entertain in in that area. Okay, great. Um, I've got a question. Oh, sorry. Right. CCNRs were not included with this. Okay, that's it. Uh, that was the other was the final plot tonight. Yeah, another one. Okay, um, and then um, I know that the fire department had initially put on that storage tank in the open space of the north lot, which I know was the septic. So you say that you feel you have space for that that won't interfere with your septic drain field and replacement area? Yeah, I feel we do the. Our test wells were on the be the southeast corner of what, where we're calling that open space or the septic area. Um, so we have the ability to move that drain field south and east quite a bit if needed. Um, you so know, you, so you feel you have space there then? Yeah, there is. I, I feel there's plenty of space in that corner to to satisfy that to have room for the septic and the tank. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Is it above ground storage tank or underground? I think it would be underground. Would be underground? The fire, fire mm -hmm. tank. 
Yeah, it would be a 30,000 gallon underground storage tank. Okay. The fire department's installed, or there are several around McCall, and so we're following plans that we've seen from other similar situations. Scott, do you have any thoughts, questions, concerns? You might be muted, Scott. Star six. Yeah, I am. Uh, no, I muted on my phone. I, oh. I would just make an appeal that as the developers de develop uh, the CCNRs that they strongly consider uh, limiting the uh, the Airbnb, um, the use of, of Airbnb, that, those style of rentals. And I know they said that they don't intend to do that, but it would be much easier for you to enforce it if you considered including something in the CCNRs that limits the the uh, frequency or limits the amount of time to no no less than 30 days or, or something of that nature, because we all know what kinds of problems we're dealing with. Uh, right now, and uh, without those kinds of things in the CCNRs. So, just an appeal. Is Tony any other thoughts, concerns, questions, ideas? I, I just know the applicants have requested waiving of that second amenity requirement. So, I don't know if that's something that we want to discuss at all. I've I'm, I'm cool with the I, yeah. conditions of approval as written, so. So the conditions, does it have in there that mm -hmm. does, it needs the second amendment or the yep. amendment? It does say it needs it. It does. Which number? What that? second amenity could be? Well, that's <laughs> what I was kind of thinking about. Like, are they going to put a barbecue area in? <laughs> you know? I would entertain an argument uh, from these people, that, from the applicants, that uh, the neighborhood benefits of not having short-term rentals uh -huh. might count as a second amenity. Okay. Oh, I, I like that. That yeah. could be a good one. Uh -huh. Do we need to confirm that in any way? Okay. Mm -hmm. Scott? It's never been done before. Do we need to confirm that in any way? Um, the definition of amenity is pretty loose and it is up to you guys and the city council or the county commissioners, I should say, to determine if that is adequate. It could be a public benefit for the right. uh -huh. area because yeah. the amenity would be the area and that I could mm -hmm. see that being mm -hmm. a, a positive and an amenity, yeah. especially in a, a subdivision of this type that really not a common area open space right. that can really add to right. it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I like that. So keep that in mind, commissioners, for whoever may make a motion. I think we would need to, unless I'm missing it in here, on the conditions of approval, or would it fall into, with the fire tank, does that fall into item, or do I see it? Fire tank was just um, fire district's comment that. Um, in lieu of the fire flow requirements, but. But we need to add that in the conditions of approval. I would recommend maybe just including a condition of approval stating acceptance from the fire department is required prior to or planned acceptance by the okay, so fire department final plan submittal. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? Anybody would like to make a motion? Go ahead. <laughs> she got you by half second. Okay. Okay. Uh, I move to approve PUD 2202 and subdivision 2201 with the conditions of approval as stated, but to include uh, a note that uh, the plan acceptance, uh, we need plan acceptance by the fire department, uh, as well as adding the suggestion of a uh, bar against vacation rentals as a potential amenity. Okay. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Isn't I accept it. Isn't this a recommendation? Isn't this a rec recommendation for approval? 
Yeah, this is to the county commissioners. Yeah. Is that the yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, just the last part of that. Then. Mm -hmm. Just the last part of it. Or? No, that's just the recommendation towards the county. Oh, okay. All right. I see. Um, so uh, we got all approved. Any against? Motion is carried. All right. Now we'll move on to design review 2203 and scenic. Ralph, twenty two oh one. And Luke, are you with us? I am. All right. It's all yours. I'm Luke Benoy with McCall Design and Planning, uh, 121 Commerce Street. And I have with me here Hallie Schultz. Um, she's the project manager on this one. Um, we're representing Tom and Lori Corrick. And uh, this is a garage and Mudroom uh, Master Suite Edition at 2260 Payette Drive. And with that, I'll turn this over to Holly. She can walk you through the design. Hello. Um, so this is a lake lot, um, and the proposed project is an addition remodel on the west side of the property, so away from the lake. Um, from the site plan there. The dark gray is the new portion of the house and the light gray is the existing house. Um, the existing driveway is going to be used. Um, we are going to add a little bit of driveway to access a third garage bay that we are adding. Um, if you can go to the next sheet. So there's existing site photos of the existing house. There's currently a two car garage and an existing entry mudroom um, that we're going to demolish to build the new one. Um, the current uh, connector has a lot of ice issues and the garage, they want a little bit more garage space. So that existing garage is going to be demolished. Uh, and we're going to be adding a three bay garage with a master suite above it and a connector that will have an entry and a mudroom in. Um, do the floor plan there. That shows the main level. Uh, bay garage. Utilities, the um, propane tank is going to stay in its existing location and we're going to add a mini for the uh, new living space above the garage. Um, go to the next sheet, please. Upper level connector, just an office and master suite there. You can go to the next sheet. Elevations show we're going to be uh, matching the existing colors, exterior finishes, um, fascia and eve details the owners the corex really want this to look like it's all one house close to the existing as possible so that is the goal is to make it look like it was built at one um the next sheet shows some 3d views um, the Addition will be barely visible from the lakeside. Um, if visible at all, it's going to sit behind the existing home. And we're not doing any work on that lakeside of the house. Um, some section views. Um, the height of the new portion is going to match the height of the existing portion of the house. So we're not adding any extra. Um, building height there. Uh, we have had Crestline has done a preliminary stormwater report. That's all I have. Anybody has any questions? Uh, Brian, would you like to give your staff report? This is really clean. Uh, there, I had to do a lot of digging and couldn't really find much to nitpick on. Um, <laughs> The one condition of approval is to get final engineering approval. Um, and so with that, I'll turn it over to Morgan for her thoughts on it. Um, so 
they had a very good draft stormwater drainage report and it <coughs> seems it will comply with the city's drainage management guidelines. Um, they just need to finalize their narratives um, and include some graphs and hydrographs. Um, and then I was asked for identifying if any trees or landscaping will be required to be removed with the proposed side yard swales. Um, it wasn't very clear from the plans that were submitted. Um, and that's about it for me. This was a pretty solid submittal for me. Great, thanks Morgan. All right, uh, this is a public hearing, so we will open it up to public comment. Uh, we do not have anybody here with us. Uh, is there anybody online that would like to comment on this project? Again, if you're on the phone, star six to unmute yourself. Oh, is there anybody who would like to comment? The only phone attendee I have is Commissioner Tunnel. Okay. Uh, at this point, it doesn't look like there's any comment, so we will close the public hearing. Um, this looks pretty cut and dry. I think it's a nice addition. I could see definitely the need with the snow with the roof lines, which is mm -hmm. very no-no in the fall. So when they built that, they should have seen that coming. But wish uh, I, had, this wish fears, I had one of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fears to fit well. The lot coverage is there. Um, I don't. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, any questions, thoughts, concerns? Is that a, oh, sorry. Is that a closed breezeway? Yes, it is. Between the house and the garage, okay. Yeah, it, it contains the entry and to the house as well as a mud room and laundry room. Okay. Yeah, I do wish I had one of those. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody like to make the motion? I will. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that we that on. Um, Make sure I get the right one here. Uh, DR 22-03 and SH 22-01 that we approved uh, this addition of this garage and the de demolition of the existing garage. And I think there was a driveway that was going to be just with conditions of approval. With, with conditions of approval, yeah. Okay. You know, state them. There's, there's my motion. I second. Okay. All right. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All against? Motion carries. You're approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish they were all like that. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we're going to PUD 21, excuse me, 2001 for a final plan and uh, SUV or subdivision 2004 final plat for uh, the running horse. Uh, Sasha, are you with us or is that who we have or no? Steve or both? Uh, it's Steve Nolman. All right, Steve, uh, go ahead. Well, this is a final plat and final PUD plan submittal for the running horse planned unit development, which received all of its preliminary approvals. Um, and uh, uh, we have reviewed the uh, staff report um, and um, the city engineer comments um, and the proposed conditions of approval. Uh, and I, I think uh, Brian has a, a couple of tweaks on the on two of the conditions just to clarify that uh, that I requested. Otherwise, we have no objection to those. We understand that final engineering approval is is a condition of approval. And um, I think uh, Scott Acker is continuing to work with Morgan on on um, some of the comments that she rendered. Um, so this is not a public hearing. It is a final plat and a final PUD plan, which are evaluated uh, uh, primarily as to their conformity with the preliminary plat and preliminary PUD plan. Uh, Brian summarized those in his staff report um, and uh, happy to answer any questions, but otherwise would uh, submit uh, these two for your approval. Okay. Brian, right. yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, as Norman said, this is a final plat and final development plan application uh, for the running horse, uh, which was approved in 2021. Um, generally, it is in conformance with the 
uh, conditions of approval and original application for the preliminary plat. Um, the items that Mr. Millen mentioned that I address, um, one, I failed to put the sub-2004 uh, file number on the findings. Make sure to include that in your motion. Um, conditional approval number seven says that uh, this will expire if they have recorded it, not recorded it within 18 months. Um, and then the more substantive one was the landscaping. Uh, generally, just a clarification uh, that existing trees and shrubs are included. Total number of plantings in there. Um, my suggested language is uh, prior additions of building permit, the applicant shall provide a revised landscaping plan showing a minimum of nine additional native trees and 97 additional native shrubs to be planted along the frontage of West Lake Street. The current plan is short that many. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Morgan. So this one is pretty straightforward also for me. Um, it's just finishing up the plot details and getting that finalized for recording. Um, we're working through the escrow um, cost estimates with Scott Acker for the improvements that haven't been completed yet. Um, and then we are also working through the easement dedication for the offsite easements um, with Steve and our and our team. And those will be shown on the plat once those are done before it's recorded. And that's all I have. Okay, great. Um, I don't see much for changes. I mean, from the original application, you seem to have it numbered. Uh, Scott, do you, I don't know if you were at the main meeting with this one, but do you have any questions, Scott? I, I was at the main meeting or the first meeting uh, and no, I don't see any material changes and uh, everything looks appropriate to me. Yeah. I, I think, everything appears to be as it was supposed to be. And this is again, is final plat approval and I don't see any major, major changes. Approved in previous approval. And I'm sorry, Brian, you said nine additional trees and how many additional uh, shrubs? 97. 97. Other than that, I have some questions. <laughs> All right. I'm open for a motion. I move to approve PUD 2001 and sub 2004 uh, with the conditions of approval as stated, with the exception of item three, update to reflect nine additional native trees and 97 additional native shrubs. Item seven include the negation of the sentence so that it reads become void whenever the applicant has not reported the flag and include the appropriate subdivision uh, request identification number. Second. Second. I guess I can do all that. OK. <laughs> OK, we have a motion to approve in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, excuse me, I was thinking about a question. I, 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 I do have a question uh, for anybody, anyone involved in this. The side, was there any sidewalks involved with the with it, this development, or was there ever any thought about it? Because I keep hearing things about sidewalk from you know town to Shore Lodge. Is that there's a pathway that kind yeah. of goes across the front and then comes to the back? There, so it, there is there's a, a pathway. There's, there's a pathway that's yeah. not really a sidewalk. Not though. a sidewalk. Yeah, off the street. Separated pathway opposite. That's why I I slowed up on my approval approval there. But okay, I was just curious okay, about have, that. Uh, any against? Okay, uh, motion is approved. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Revised to send it to council. Oh, yeah, it goes to council. Okay, can we do that over again? Yeah. Sorry. The motion? Um, just, I guess, revise it to put the. Um, sure. Uh, commending the council at the beginning. 
first. All right, so the get to the page. Again. So the conditions uh, of approval as stated, except with the updates to item three to reflect nine additional native trees and 97 additional native shrubs. Item seven to include the word not in the first sentence to say that the final subdivision plat approval shall lapse and become void whenever the applicant has not recorded the plat within 18 months. And to update the overall uh, paperwork to include the reference to the subdivision ID 2004. And second. We have a motion and a second. Once again, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Scott? Okay. Yep, I'm I'm in there. <laughs> okay, good job. Uh, all opposed. None. Hearing none. Uh, motion is carried. Approved. All right. Again, thank you, very much, Steve. Thank you all. All right. Um, we didn't have any signs, did we? Or did I miss something? Uh, nope. There will be five text signs. Five. One signs, really. No mm -hmm. black and white. <laughs> Contrasting. Good. Okay. Um, all right. I think that covers everything. Um, open for a motion to adjourn. I think the motion we adjourn the meeting on March 1st at uh, <laughs> 5 50. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. You are adjourned. Thank you very much, Scott. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks. You bet. Yeah. 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 Now we got it done. All right. Quickly, too.